In this movie, we will talk about the basic layout of modern-day microscopes. But before we look at modern-day microscopes, let's first go back to Anthony van Leeuwenhoek's uh, simple lens system and the remarkable observations that we made. So here you see an image of Anthony van Leeuwenhoek next to an image of a replica of the lens system that he used. If you look carefully, you can see a tiny lens in the middle of the structure, pointed at by the arrow, with a needle-like structure in front on which Anthony put his sample to be inspected. You can see two screws. One is used for moving the sample in the field of view of the lens. The other is used to focus the system on this object. Now with this simple lens system, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek managed to achieve magnification factors of about 100 times, leading to the observation of cellular systems and the birth of microbiology. Now this system is very different from a modern day microscope that you see depicted here. This is just a simple microscope layout, but you can already see that there's a much com more complicated lens system involved. We can clearly identify the objective lens, which can reach magnifications of about 100 times, remarkably the same as what Anthony van Leeuwenhoek reached. You can also see that the lens system is equipped with an eyepiece to observe the sample, which brings in an additional magnification of about 10 times, or with a camera mount to capture an image of the sample, so without the need to actually draw the image while looking at it like Anthony van Leeuwenhoek did. Now before we're going to look at image formation with such a modern uh, compound microscope, let's first look at how single lens magnification works. With a single lens, we can magnify an image based on the ratio between the object distance and the image distance. We will look at the formulas in a bit more detail later. However, we should realize that this is not the same as a system where a uh, researcher looks through a lens at an object. So we see that depicted on the slide here. So now our lens, our, so now our eye brings in an additional lens and they typically portray the uh, image of the object at a distance of 25 centimeters behind the object. Now, in general, for a single lens system, we see that in order to reach a high magnification, we need a short focal distance, so meaning a strong lens and high uh, angular deflections of the right light rays passing through the lens. However, if we have high magnification, we have a very small field of view. So we've seen before that in modern day systems, the magnification of a compound objective lens is still about a factor of 100, but one of the main realizations is that we can reach much larger fields of view. So it's one of the reasons why modern day microscope consists of so much more lenses, is to be able to reach this high magnification over a much larger field of view. So let's now look back at the modern day microscope. Here is a cut through depicting the lens system in such a system. We can basically divide the lens systems into two parts. One part, depicted in blue, is necessary for the image formation. And another part, depicted in red, is needed for illumination. So the illumination needs to make sure that we illuminate homogeneously over a large field of view. And the image formation needs to bring in a magnification so that we can actually observe details at a higher resolution. Now, the basic imaging principle in a modern day microscope is slightly different from that of a single lens system. So let's look at a simple two lens compound microscope system, which you see depicted here. In a compound microscope, we first have an objective lens that makes an image of an object. You can see that image in the diagram here depicted as the intermediate image. The intermediate image is then focused upon by the eyepiece which forms an image to the observer, just like we would have for a single lens system where an observer looks through the lens. So this brings in the additional magnification. Now, typical magnifications that we have in current day compound microscope systems are a factor of five to 100 times for the objective lens, depending on which type of objective lens we use, and an additional factor of about one to 10 times magnification brought in by the eyepiece. Now, besides enabling high magnification imaging over a large field of view. One of the other reasons why there are so many more lenses in a modern day microscope is to correct for aberrations in the imaging systems. Now, if we use high magnification imaging, we look at strongly curved lenses, and strongly curved lens means that there are distortions or aberrations occurring for rays traveling further off axis. 
These aberrations, of course, also distort the image quality. I will show you an example of how such a lens system corrects for one particular type of aberrations, namely chromatic aberrations. So we can distinguish two different types of aberrations. The first are chromatic aberrations, which result for the presence of multiple colors or wavelengths in the illumination light. We will see for electron microscopy that this, the equivalent for electrons, is the velocity with which the electrons travel, or the energy that the electrons have. And besides chromatic aberrations, there's also spherical aberrations, which result from uh, the, the surface of the lens and impurities in the lens system. Now, chromatic aberrations arise for light by the fact that the refractive index is different for different wavelengths of light. So typically, blue light refracts stronger than red light, and you see that depicted in the scheme here. This means that the focal point for the blue light is at a different position than that for the red light. Of course, if we would do multicolor imaging, we would have, we would want to have the focal points at the same position. So in the same focal plane. Now, current objective lenses consist of a, an array of lenses placed, uh, behind each other in order to correct for all these aberrations. And we can distinguish based on the number of wavelengths that are corrected for between achromatic lenses and apochromatic len lenses and other ones. You see some examples depicted here. Now in the graph to the right, you can see in blue the typical uh, focus error for a non-aberration-corrected -aberration simple lens as a function of wavelength. Now in the, dif in the other colors, we see the, dif the different degrees of aberration correction. So for an apochromatic lens, we see that aberrations are corrected for four different points to be at the same uh, focal distance with only slight variations when we move to a diff slightly different wavelength regime. And you can see the different curves for the different types of lenses. Now we will look a little bit more on uh, the properties of lenses and the other types of aberrations, spherical aberrations, in the next video.